Another way to make 3D objects inside Photoshop is via extrusions. They used to be called repose in previous versions of Photoshop. Now they're called extrusions. Think of an extrusion as like squeezing toothpaste out of a toothpaste tube. It starts off as flat at the end of the nozzle there, but then when you squeeze it out, it maintains the shape of the nozzle, but just gets a lot longer, and that's an extrusion. There's several ways that you can make extrusions inside Photoshop. You can make extrusions from shapes or from selections or from text or from paintbrush strokes, all kinds of ways. In fact, there are so many different ways that you can create extrusions and adjust them that it's one of those things that once you get started, you may lose track of time. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to extrusions, and then in subsequent lessons, I'm going to show you some of the extra features, some of the features that go beyond what you can do with mesh presets. To follow along, go to Photoshop here and open it up. Let's make a new document. File, New, and then we'll just go with this thing that I've been doing, the 1200 by 1200 with a transparent background. Click OK. First order of business is to make an extrusion from text. Now I'm going to devote an entire chapter to working with extruded text, but here I want to use it as a way to introduce extrusions. So I'm going to go down and click on the Type tool here, and just type in A letter, letter A, like so, and accept that. And now I'm going to extrude this by going to the 3D panel here, and clicking on Extrusion, 3D Extrusion, and clicking on Create. But before I do that, I want to also show that you can always go to the 3D menu and get the same commands up here, but I'd like to work inside the panel here. So I've got the Extrusion radio button selected, and click on Create. And now we're going to squeeze this thing out of the toothpaste tube. You rotate it around there so you can see it. Look at that. Now, if you take a look over here in this panel under the letter A, you've got A front inflation, A front bevel, A extrusion. It's not bad grammar, it's just using the letter A because that's what we have here. We've got a front inflation, front bevel, extrusion, back bevel, back inflation. What do these guys mean? Five different meshes for one object. What it means is the front inflation is this area right there. You can put material on that. Front bevel, well, you don't see a bevel here, but you can make a bevel, and if you do, you can put material on that. The extrusion is along the edges here, not only outside, but also inside. Then you've got a back bevel and a back inflation. So five places to put different materials. If you go down a little farther, you'll see something new, boundary constraint. The boundary constraint is the outline of it. That says, where are the edges of this extrusion? You don't see this in a mesh preset. But more importantly is the internal constraint, right there. The internal constraint is that hole there, that triangle. You can cut holes inside extrusions and have them go all the way through. I'll just click on there and rotate it around so you can see it goes all the way through. This is a triangle here. It can be any shape you want when you cut a hole, an internal constraint inside an extrusion. I'm going to talk about that feature in an upcoming lesson. There are some other really cool things you can do with extrusions that you can't do with mesh presets. Let's go over here and take a look at the properties panel. You see this thing is called a shape preset. Click on that and you've got all these little guys that look like bevels. Looks pretty nice there. Change it to another one like so. But going down a little bit farther, you're going to see some very strange looking things. Check this out here. What's that? And what's going on there? How did that happen? How about this one here? Wow, I need to slide it all the way over a little bit. Hang on a second while I slide you over so you can see what's going on. Look at that. What's going on is that you have more properties that you can work with when you have an extrusion. I'll undo that a couple of times here by going back to the beginning here. I'm going back now to the properties by clicking on the letter A and going over here to this next thing called the form. The form was where all that stuff was happening. You can twist it. You can taper it off to the back like that. Going down a little bit farther here, you can bend it. Around on itself like so. Do it vertically as well. And you can also, it's called shear it. Like so. Horizontally and vertically. All kinds of possibilities here. So I'm going to talk about these properties in an upcoming lesson as well. So those are some of the cool things you can do with extrusions. Let's just take a look at how you can make extrusions. I'm going to turn off the eyeball for A here and make a new layer. And I want to make an extrusion now from a brush stroke. So I go over to the paintbrush here, or I can click on the letter B if I want to select it. Let me go get kind of a standard brush stroke here by, let's say, going to this guy right there. Now I'm going to draw a brush stroke here. Something like that. Maybe draw an extra line here like this. Kind of like the letter H, right? Now I'm going to make a 3D extrusion from that brush stroke. Click on Create, and we have a chair. Pretty nice. And it has the same set of five meshes there. There's a boundary constraint, that's the outside of it, but no internal constraint. There's no hole in it, but we could carve a hole if we wanted to. So there you go, that's a fairly simple brush stroke. Let's move on down the line here and make a different kind of a brush stroke. New layer here. I'm going to go click B for the brush stroke, and then look at some presets here. And we'll go on down the line here a little bit farther. Let's say we'll pick this one here. It's kind of a wispy look to it. 
we have things that are not that distinct, sometimes Photoshop has problems making the extrusion. Let's just try this and see what happens. Pretty cool looking stroke there. Let's see if we can make an extrusion from that. Go over here, extrusion selected, click on that, and look at that. Pretty great. And by the way, you're not stuck with that extrusion depth. You can always change that. Make it smaller, like so, or thicker, or even reverse it. Let's try a different brush stroke here just to show you some more possibilities. Turn that one off, make a new layer. And let's take a look a little farther down here. Let's check out these leaves right there. See how they look. Let me look at the properties for the leaves here. I want the leaves to be not so scattered like that. I'm going to turn off scattering. There we go. It'll be a little better. If they were scattered, they probably wouldn't actually make the extrusion. There's too much stuff to make an extrusion from. And we'll space it out a little bit less like that. And we'll see what happens this time. There we go. We'll see if we can make an extrusion from that. There we go. Look at that. Pretty wild, huh? I want to do one more here just to really test the limits. Turn that one off. New layer. Change to a different preset. One with the grass right there. The grass is kind of complex. It has that opacity to it, that kind of soft look. Let's take a look at its additions here. I think I want to turn off scattering a bit so it's a little more structured. Let's place it closer together like that to increase the odds that this will actually work. And close that down there and see what we have here now. I'll do one more drawing like so, and we'll see if this guy will extrude it. It might not. We'll try it there. So that didn't work. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And you have to make some adjustments to make them a little less detailed to have the extrusion work. I'll do Control Command Z. I want to do one more little thing here. I want to switch from the brush tool to the pencil tool like that. The pencil tool, you usually set it at one when you draw a stroke with a pencil. So it looks something like that. And that will be too thin. That simply will not work. You need to have something thicker than that. And you get an immediate response there. So I'll do controller commands. You don't do that. If I go to two, it'll work partially. You might have some holes in it. But if I go to three, it will work. So let me just highlight three here like that. Close the brush panel. And now we'll paint something here with that pencil. Extrude that. Look at that from a pencil stroke. Very cool. And again, you can put all kinds of meshes on there. Even though there's not much room for a bevel, there are at least options for a bevel. All right, let's just move on now to something else. We've done things with a paintbrush stroke. I'm going to make a new layer now. I want to use the Shape tool. So go over here and click on the Shape tool. I can click on Ellipse, for example. Just click on Ellipse like that. It pulls it automatically, although I could, instead of having a shape up here, I could make it a path or pixels. So I'll do that differently now. I'll go over here and undo that. We'll make a path out of that one. Have it be a path, I'll draw like that. So you can not only do it from something that looks like a shape or looks like a drawing or a paintbrush stroke, you can do it from a path. Let's go over here to 3D, click on 3D extrusion, and create. And I get this message, can't create it because it's empty. But that's because the source is a layer. Change this to a path, and I go create. And then boom, now I've got this. And it's a little odd the way it works with path. They click on this thing, rotate around it. You can see it has those little holes chunking through there. Or at least it looks like it has holes going through there. But that's how you do it from a path. If I take a look at its material, just to see how the material works, I'll take a look at the front inflation and look at its texture. And it says it's applied to several things at once. And it is blank, but it does look odd when you do bring it out like that. It really is just a flat thing. Let me go back here. Let's make a 3D extrusion from a custom shape. Turn that off. Click this new layer on here. Have the shape selected. But I want to go down to custom shape this time and select something from the custom shape library. Now, if you've got just a few like that, you can always expand the size of your library by clicking this thing like that and going down to all. It's a great way to get them all on there. Click on that. If I append it, that means it's going to repeat some of these guys. So I'll just say OK and replace it. And those guys that were there before are also still going to be inside this one. Let's scroll down a little bit. It's kind of fun to make extrusions from shapes that have holes in them. Let me scroll down here a little ways. Let's try the little copyright symbol there. I'll draw that. It says work path now, like that. I could change it to something else, but work path really applies here. Click create. There you go. There's all those holes there. If you look at this, you see you've got all these front inflations here, but you've got internal constraints and internal constraints. You've got that internal constraint inside there, that hole there. Then one inside it is this guy inside it, which is a boundary constraint, but it's inside it like that. So you have this very complex shape that you can make with all kinds of options inside it in terms of what you can apply to it. You can also create shapes from selected objects. So I'm going to go over here to File and Place. 
I'm going to go find that dish shot from the photo spin images folder. Take a look at this guy right there, the place setting, and double click on that. We'll accept that placement. I'm going to zoom in and select that thing. So I'll just go Control plus a couple times or Command plus to get a little closer. I want to select it using the quick selection tool. I want to select this on the inside like that. The easiest way to select something is just, you know, click inside like that. And I could probably improve it a little bit, but I think that's fine for our purposes. I'm going to make a layer mask. So just click over here to make a layer mask and that selects our guy. We'll turn off the one below it there. Now with that selected with the layer mask active like that, I can make an extrusion from that. It says it's a selected path. That's because we didn't switch back. So we got to go back over here to the selected layer. That's good enough. It could be the selection as well, but selected layer. And then we go like that. And there you have it. We have this pretty odd looking plate there. What we do in this case, just to kind of wrap this thing up is select that, make the extrusion not so huge. Sometimes the extrusion slider doesn't show up here. So I'm just going to type in 100 to guess what it should be. Now I can always go to deform and I can change the value for the taper to something like 50 or something like that. I'll just drop this guy down to about 50. And that gives us kind of a rounded off bowl there like that. And we can also mess with the inside of this thing when we talk about beveling. So there you go. That's how you extrude 3D objects from text, from brush strokes, from shapes, and also from selections.